the tempest. A violent storm was raging over the island. Palm trees bent and swayed like dancers in the howling gale. On a beach not far from the mouth of his cave stood Prospero, the wizard. As he raised his left hand, thunder rumbled. When he lifted his stick in his right hand, lightning crackled, flickering like snakes. Out to sea, a ship with broken masts and tattered sails wallowed helplessly as the storm drove it towards the coral reef. A young woman in a white gown hurried out of the cave and ran toward P Prospero. She caught the wizard by the sleeve and called out, Father! Prospero seemed not to hear her. His eyes stayed fixed firmly on the ship. Father! shouted the young woman. What are you doing? Everyone aboard that ship will die. A huge wave thundered down on the ship and made it vanish from sight. Prospero lowered his hands. Soon the wind dropped, the clouds faded into a blue sky and the sea calmed down. No one is harmed, Miranda, said Prospero. Everything is as I planned. For your sake, I used my magic to help right a great wrong done long ago. What wrong, father? Miranda asked with a puzzled frown. Enough, said Prospero. He moved his left hand and in front of Miranda's face, and she fell into an enchanted sleep. Prospero walked towards the sea, looking out at the place where the ship sank. Soon, my brother, he whispered. A sound made him turn his head, in time to see a strange creature. It was like a man, but its skin was covered with green scales, and its eyes were as yellow as a lizard's. I was not born to be your servant, Caliban answered defiantly. My mother, the great witch, Sycorax, promised me that I would rule this island, but you came here and stole her magic books and freed her slave spirits to help you. Silence, said Prospero, and he snapped his fingers. Needles of fire seemed to lance through Caliban, forcing him to his knees. Mercy, master, mercy, he cried, bowing his head. Why are you so cruel, he whimpered. You were kind to me once. And you repaid my kindness by trying to kidnap my daughter, said Prospero. Get to work, you treacherous wretch. I will take revenge one day, Caliban muttered. I will be the king of this island, and I will take Miranda as my queen. When Caliban left, Prospero lifted his stick. Ariel, he called softly. Appear to me now, sweet spirit. There was a faint sound of music. Lights sparkled in the air. In the midst of the lights fluttered a young boy, with golden skin and white wings. He smiled at Prospero. Prospero laughed. Faithful Ariel, he said. Are the sailors scattered over the island as I commanded? They are, good master, said Ariel. And where is Ferdinand, the king of Naples' son? Prospero demanded. Close by, said Ariel. He mourns his father, believing him to be drowned. He is not drowned, said Prospero. He wanders the island, lost, with my brother Antonio. Prospero sighed. Twelve years ago, when I was Duke of Milan, my wife died, he said sadly. Grief blinded me to the treachery of Antonio, who plotted in secret with my old enemy, King Alonso of Naples. They overthrew me, and Antonio took my place. I was put in an open boat with my daughter and cast adrift to die, but destiny took me to this island, to Sycorax's magic books, and to you. My spells brought the ship here, and now it is time for mischief and magic. And revenge, master, said Ariel. Prospero shook his head. I do not seek revenge, only justice, he said. Go to Prince Ferdinand and bring him here. When your plan is done, shall I be free? Free is the wind, my Ariel, said Prospero. I will break my spells, and no magic will ever hold you again. Ferdinand was seated, cross-legged on the sand. His handsome face looked sad. He was trying to decide if it was better to swim out to sea and join his drowned father, or face a life of miserable loneliness. Then he heard music and the singing of a sweet high voice. Forget your father. Come with me now, Prince Ferdinand.